Hey there, guys, gals, fans, and pals. Everybody, John Megacycle here. Uh, I wanted to give the 1 million blocks bucks challenge a shot. And what you saw on the screen just before I started talking, or as I was talking, uh, random seed. I clicked the random button a bunch, campaign, skip tutorials. Uh, the clock is going to start right when I make contact with the ground. I believe that's the standard rule for this sort of a thing. Right there, clock in the upper right. Um, realistically, I wanted to just give it a go. I didn't know if I would do any good. I was really aiming for like 2 hours, 40 minutes. Anywhere from between there and 3 hours. Really hoping I'd have a good run of it. So, realistically, a lot of this is going to be really, really sped up. I just wanted to give a proper preamble before the game gets going. Um, yeah, so let's just get right to it. So if you're unfamiliar for the first part of the game, we crash land, and we've got to piece ourselves back together. We're handed about four little mini-missions. Uh, first off, we're landed with some parts. We need to piece ourselves, which is what we got here. We go get the solar panel and the recharger, the healing bubble. We, go, we then go get a radar and then a battery, and then we head back to the crash site, and we just keep piecing ourselves little bits by bits all together, and then we're able to go accept missions and such. Uh, this really didn't pose a lot of variance, I don't think. There's randomness to this, and every seed's gonna be a little bit different. I think when it really comes down to it, the majority of it falls under human control. Meaning, all of these places warp randomly to me, they're not predetermined with the seed being random, uh, and the locations of everything being. Maybe you can trim up like a minute or two here? Right there, I just pick up the battery, but... Like, maybe when it really comes down to it, you can trim out some time with a proper seed and proper testing, um, I wasn't able to find any repeatability here. It just kind of, you know, next waypoint, next waypoint, next waypoint. This is the only one that kind of was similar because it always forces you back to the crash site. As your last objective, you get more gear, more stuff. I just was really trying to slap crap together. I wasn't trying to aim for anything specific. My main goal is to get to Geocorp as soon as I can because those larger pieces are gonna allow me to do all my smelting and everything on site. Uh, with a much bigger frame. Now this is another thing that's really high on the randomness is where the store is. Uh, I found in this current version 145 I think I'm playing, um, the randomness actually changes where the store is located and not that, but like on the minimap, I'll sometimes get told I'm going the wrong way, which is interesting. So at this very moment I'm just gonna head to the shop, get to the shop close enough, let them chit chat, oh, activate the troll, and then, yeah. So this this all moves over pretty quickly. Uh, we're already eight minutes in. That seemed to be about my average at this point. Uh, anywhere from eight to 10 was actually my average based on also who I'm fighting because everyone I'm fighting becomes random as well. So buy a thimble, uh, collect some resources, do a little testing, pull this back. Now I wasn't sure if this quest was based on how much money value stuff was or how many items you brought back. Uh, actually, this, oh, I take it back. This one is money value. The one when we go to talk to Prospector Pete for Geocorp is going to be about just quantity, I think. I wasn't entirely sure, but thankfully he spawns really close here. This was a really quick venture. Um, so let's just roadmap this a bit. The objective that I need to do is I want to make a million block bucks as quick as possible, right? To do that, there's a couple of missions I must do. This one, actually, I don't have to do. Um, this unlocks my Geocorp license, but like I said, I really like Geocorp, so I wanted to unlock the license. Um, the other missions are GSO that are necessary, and I'm going to meet a gentleman named Crafty Mike. Crafty Mike, I'm going to meet him twice. He's actually going to open up some new recipes for me. He's going to give me the sales gun, the refinery, and also the... Uh, not the auto miner, but the fabricator. And those are really important. So here we are with Crafty Mike. Again, the locations of all the missions are completely random. I don't know how to predict them based on the seed or anything. These are all flying by the seat of my pants and just knocking through stuff. Uh, the last mission that we need is one that's called, I think, Tricky Turrets or something. It's guarding a GSO trade station. And what that will give me is an inventory. Right now, I don't have an inventory. Absolutely everything is on my person that I have. Uh, having an inventory opens up like a pocket network or a, a pocket dimension, whatever you want to call it, and it allows me to just store stuff like outside of the circle, outside of me. 
uh, which is great because then I can actually manipulate all the stuff I'm going to be fabricating and everything. So in terms of missions, uh, I think I've picked up the last mission there. Everything going a little fast. I'm trying to do a little narration here. Uh, everything's picked up. I'll be heading over to the turret one that I mentioned before. Again, this is just going to open up my inventory. And yeah, there's two turrets you can see in the distance. They're picking fights with each other. This fight can actually just resolve itself if you do nothing. But doing nothing is kind of a waste of time. So I want to get in there. Easy pickings. Once that happens, we'll be given a little tutorial on how stuff works. And then I'll be able to shovel stuff to inventory. Yep. And then once that's all done, yep, I'm already trying to pick up some pieces, trying to make myself... Uh, what I need, really, is a mobile uh, acquisition, refining, fabrication, sales unit. Sort of a thing, like a mobile base. Uh, because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building auto miners the very second we can unlock the technology via fabrication. So after this mission, I'll have another mission with Crafty Mike. Um, and then that'll be all the missions I'll be doing. I won't be doing any more missions. I'm not going to be looking to evolve my licenses. I'm not going to be looking to anything. But that's kind of the plan. So right now, it's a quick slap together. With the money I received at the start of the game, it's not nearly enough cash to build a, an entire Geocorp tech. Uh, so right now, I'm going to have to... I'm just putting the GSO blocks into my inventory, just trying to get stuff done, and move on. Yeah, right now I've got a real clunky little jerk kind of a build. I don't have the right wheels, I don't have the right anything. But the point of like the speed run we're trying to do here is all about time, right? If I can minimize time wasted somewhere or maximize my efficiency somewhere else or what have you, that's what's most important out of everything. So right now I've just got a clunky little thing. Uh, my real objective is to just get what I need done and get it done quickly. So we can start working on the second phase of this whole thing, uh, which is, yep, here's Crafty Mike. The second phase is all the acquisition, refining, fabrication, and sales, like I mentioned before. So this is gonna be the last mission we're gonna take. Crafty Mike is gonna teach us all about fabrication. Uh, he's gonna make us create a GSO one, one by one block. And then with that, I'll be able to take the fabricator and do what I need. Uh, it's incredibly simple to get a mining operation started, and this is kind of where a bit of the grind is going to be, but it's going to be a lot of me finding three resources and taking those and immediately putting them into uh, auto refineries, and then taking the auto refineries and putting them into inventory, and then just when I find a good mining area, that's exactly what the plan is with that. All right, things are looking smooth. All the missions are done. Everything's cleaned up. Right now, what I'm looking for is where we're going to set up our mining colony. We're going to be harvesting something called erudite. E-R-U-D-I-T-E. -E. It's that green stuff, the green crystalline stuff. You can see in my inventory literally right now. I got one piece of it. And it sells for, I think, 155 straight up, but 233 if refined. And that's a lot of money. Um, a lot of the other resources locally are not going to give me that kind of scratch. And that's definitely the most profitable mineral this side of the game this early. Considering we're starting this green plains area, uh, you can find what are called erudite outcrops. And under them are the rich, rich veins that we want to harvest. So the yellow stuff that you see me messing around with right there is called luxite. L-U-X-I-T-E, in case I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, we need luxite. And we need two other minerals, and I'll bring them up when we get there. But right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build my fabrication station. What this should do is this should accumulate resources with the thimbles, put them in the silo. When I place an order with the fabricator, the refinery should say, okay, I need to harvest some stuff for you. Let me take care of that. And then push it over to the fabricator, and then I get the item I need. So what I'm messing with right there looks like plumbite, P-L-U-M-B-I-T-E. And I have Luxite already on me. What I'm looking for is a blue element, a blue seam in some of the rocks. It's called Titanite. T-I-T-A-N-I-T-E. It's called a Titanite seam. And once I start finding some Titanite seams and we have these three materials, I'll be able to start fabrication. 
And I'm just gonna kind of, yep, see those green, those green crystalline outcrops. They look like big, big, huge emeralds. That's the erudite that we're going to be mining later. So right now, a little bit of rearranging. I wasn't really happy with the loadout, realized that stuff was incorrect. Um, with this run, I think based on human error that I had, I think I could have probably trimmed out maybe 15 minutes of screwing around. Uh, maybe if I didn't try to build my Geocorp tech as early as I did, or maybe if I already had a bit of formality in the arrangement, I could have saved some time. But right now what you're witnessing is I'm building a couple of miners uh, with the three elements that I have already. I'm just sending them to inventory. This is, this is really why inventory is important, because I can go out on a scouting mission, harvest a whole mess of resources, build a whole mess of infrastructure, send it to my inventory, and then I don't have to worry about it. But right here is a really nice vein for Erudite. Again, every single hit is going to give me uh, 155 if it's unrefined. And also, you can get a maximum of four of these miners on one of these tiles. It is tricky as heck. And I think I show a bit of a secret on how to get it a little more formulaic later. But yeah, for right now, that's all it is. I just want some cash, sell some stuff. I'm really hoping that we can get, yeah, another silo kicked out. Uh, another trade station or whatever might have more of what I need. I need the sales guns. I keep forgetting what they're called, the Matroiska sales cannon or whatever, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. I need more silos, I need thimbles, I need a bunch of stuff, I need, there we go, finally some proper Geocorp wheels. Uh, that's, that's a lot better. So there's a lot of stuff that I need that I want to buy. There's a bunch of stuff that I can make. The auto miners are things I would love to buy. They're incredibly cheap. I think they're like 400 block bucks a pop. They're ridiculously cheap. Um, but making them is a very reliable way to do it. And I've already, look at that. I've already got tons of plumbite and the luxite all ready to go. Yeah, I was really lucky in a lot of these fights. I was able to get the Geocorp blocks that I really wanted and stuff. Uh, but right now, very critically, time, every second I'm spending doing stuff that's not harvesting resources is costing me money. So this is kind of one of the bigger things when it comes to randomness in a seed, right? You can do your very best based on the circumstances, and the thing that gets you like a personal best or a world record or whatever is really based on the seed. So right there, I've got all the resources. I'm doing a little rejiggerating. Uh, I'll fortify here in probably a minute and start making more stuff. Um, but yeah, realistically, take all the randomness aside and everything. Everything that was added, like the location of resources, the locations of missions, where I'm dropped, where my reclamation missions are, all that stuff. I think you could probably trim out anywhere from 20 to 30, 35 minutes maybe out of this. But this was my first and best attempt. I attempted two more times and I wasn't really thrilled with it. Um, and then I attempted a third time. And my computer just crashed halfway, and I'm like, you know what, nut bunnies, I'm not not doing this. Forget this noise. Uh, I'm low on plumbite. A lot of my parts are still flashing red. I'm really not trying to take too long to try to beef up my tech. I really just have a lot that I want to get accomplished and get accomplished quickly. Yep, a few more items. Uh, since the items kick out of one side of the GSO trading outpost and the SCU's on the other side, to make it really simple, I, I don't know if you noticed, I was purchasing one of the sales cannons and then attaching stuff to it and then clicking on it and saying, send to inventory. That's a lot easier way instead of attaching it to me or, or throwing the item over to the, to the other side of the trade thing. That's just annoying. Uh, so the other rule about this, and I forgot to mention this before, is no, I did not come in here with any uh, prototypes. I did not use any. You can see the replay. I've used none of them. Every prototype you take has to be fresh. Every snapshot has to be current. Uh, so that's another rule. So right now, what I, I don't know if you saw, but I attached a cab to four miners, and then I took a snapshot. What the cab allows you to do is abuse the build uh, beam and allows you to rotate stuff around so you can get the best view and the best angle and you could really kind of micromanage it to get all three or four or whatever your build is excuse me until you get it all functioning 
Now that being said, when you're done, if you're happy with three or two or whatever on a seam, pull off your cab, pull off your miners, and then just send them to inventory. Bingo, bongo, bango, you're done, right? No problem. No problem. Okay, a little bit of a recharge here, a little bit of a rebuild. No problem. So realistically, the next hour or so of gameplay is going to be me trying to find, right now, Plumbite, me trying to find resources that I can use to start making more auto miners, and then eventually smelters, or refineries they're called, and then set up the capability to sell that stuff quickly to rush a million block bucks. Uh, using this strategy is a really great start, even if you're not going for like a speed run or anything like that. If you're just trying to play the game and you just want to have some cash, right? Uh, the beautiful thing about it is I love Geocorp. I love them. The big bulky blocks, they've got a fair amount of armor, really good entry level if you want to do a ton of mining. It works out great. But the thing is, you don't start with a bunch of Geocorp stuff. A little defensive here. A little annoying. These guys aren't too terrible to enough to crash up my infrastructure. They're just a little annoying. It's no big deal. Um, anyway, the thing is, I need a lot of cash so I can buy the 2x2x2 two by two by two frames I want for Geocorp and make like a mega mammoth kind of a harvesting, reclamation, processing kind of a thing here. So, that's kind of the deal with that. Buying more infrastructure with the money I get. Uh, I think I just decided here to just sell out my inventory. There's plenty of Luxite around, so I wasn't hurting too bad, but having all that lumber on hand kind of sucks. Uh, I don't recall if in this save I set up a filter with one of the sales cannons, and I'm like, you know what, every time I fortify, every time I anchor, every time I sit down, I want you to sell all this lumber. Don't refine it, don't anything, just get it out of my inventory. I need the silo space for actually important stuff. Yeah, as you can see, the Luxite is always plentiful. It's incredibly easy to see, whereas the Plumbite seams in the rocks can be incredibly difficult to see. Plumbite is like a grayish silver. Rocks are like a grayish. Uh, that can be really difficult to see, especially at nighttime. So the Luxite is one of the resources that I don't really care about. There's always plenty to find. The Titanite is like a, a rich blue on a gray and i don't know if you can see it maybe the game's going too fast but there'll be a little blue seam on these rocks now one of the problems i'm noticing here with my rig is i don't have nearly enough weapons uh it's one of the things that i didn't take into consideration too much i was too obsessed with trying to get the mining numbers to work and now it's time to sit down anchor up build a couple more things Easy stuff. Easy stuff. There's a lot of recommendations I'd honestly make to this game to make it the progression to money a little slower. Uh, because right now the progression to cash is bam, 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 bam. I'm a millionaire. And I didn't even have to leave the biome. Um, realistically, Erudite should be, in my opinion, either way, way, way reduced in price or maybe move to the alien the alien biome or something like the thing is like you can make so much bank so early with little to no effort yes yeah, so here's where i'm picking up more infrastructure some more shields send it to inventory and this is where i'll probably just yeah sell out all of my stuff or at least a little bit of it and just get going so now right now what i have is in my inventory a bunch of geocorp blocks yeah right there trying to anchor anchoring is such a pain in the tuchus sometimes especially when you get the bigger suits so yeah exactly right here you can see me at the build beam just trying to manipulate it i wanted a minimum of three mines working if we can get four awesome but a minimum of three that's really what i was aiming at um all the statistics on the mines i didn't take into consideration i know there's other youtube videos that really delve deep in this is the math this is how long this will take this is how long stuff's gonna happen. This is how much is in every field or every mine or whatever. Uh, I believe there's a thousand resources in every mine as of this version. Um, and I think these things pull out an item once a minute or something. You can do the math from there, whatever. Um, all I know is I won't be able to tap these mines 
completely. I should have this challenge well beat before that happens. Yep, right here. Sometimes you can see it takes a little bit of micromanagement, and I think I actually settle for two right there just because of how close some of these things are. Uh, again, it's up to you how much time you want to spend or waste screwing around trying to get it all to match perfectly or just say, you know what, nuts to it. Uh, another really nice erudite mine right here. Lots of good resources ready to go. Uh, when it comes to processing and selling stuff, the thimbles actually make a much better component than the resource acquirers when you attach them to the sales cannons. And for a couple of reasons. One, I believe they hold more stuff. And two, they have a much bigger range. So keep that in mind. If you ever want to try this challenge, uh, my recommendation would be to stick to the thimbles. Those will work out a lot, lot better. A lot, lot better. Uh, so like I said a little bit ago, the progression is going to be fairly straightforward here. It's going to be a lot of me going to shops, me purchasing new stuff, me moving on, uh, going out getting resources, refining, processing, blah, blah, blah. That kind of a thing. That's, that's going to be the, the gameplay for the next... Uh, I believe we end at 2 hours and 30 minutes. I was pretty darn happy with that run, to be honest. Uh, so right now, I'm, I'm really looking for Tight Knight. And like I said, the seams... You, you can actually hover over a rock, and it'll tell you what kind of a rock it is. Is it literally a seam of resources buried in a rock, or is it just a rock? Like, is it just a grassland boulder or something? It'll tell you, but that's still wasted time, and I think I can carve through it faster. So just a little bit of rework here. Widen ourselves up a bit. Nothing super fancy. I, wid I widened it because I felt stability was more important. Whether or not that pays off, I'm not sure. Um, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to get better at building. I kind of find that I do a lot of futzing around. My brain is still in some sort of a creative mode, and it's like, oh, I just, I could take all the time I want and keep futzing around, which is fine if you're doing a normal playthrough. This game is relatively chill on, like, every level, but it's just, you know, it's a time trial. I'm trying to get stuff done. doesn't really help. So, anyway. Yep, so there we go. So there you can see that I'm auto-selling the resources I don't want. Very simply put, um, that's that's probably exactly what I just added now. <laughs> it's moving so fast, I'm, I'm still monologuing about the last thing while I'm doing the next thing. Which is cute. <laughs> it says a lot about my personality, doesn't it? Alright, so on the quest now for more delicious loot. Uh, while we were fortified or anchored, I keep calling it fortified. I played too many strategy games. You'll have to live with it. <laughs> but while we were anchored, I uh, was able to get a nice, decent battery charge right there. No problem. A little bit of a cleanup. Got plenty of room for storage. And now we can crank out more auto miners. Uh, it's amazing how quickly you can go from zero to hero. Like I said, in two hours, two and a half hours right around there, a uh, million block bucks. And that, that's pretty darn amazing. Um, there's a lot of changes I really wish could be added to this game, uh, though I know a lot of changes were removed over the last, I think, three years. Like, the dozer AI doesn't work. Uh, when you're playing co-op, none of the refining or crafting works. That that all sucks. Uh, but I really wish there'd be a hard mode. Um, just, like, add more economy uh, constraints, meaning make the prices of stuff like two, three, four, five, six times as much. Maybe make the value of minerals half as much. Something like that. You know, there's a lot of things that could be done. Uh, so not right now here, I'm screwing around with a turret. I'm not too sure if this was a bad call or a good call or what, but it was a call I made and... Uh, it, it works. <laughs> it kind of works. Uh, turrets aren't so hard once you figure out how they function. Oh, then I realize, I think, oh, I really don't have a lot of weapons. <laughs> Uh, when I started putting uh, turrets together on my single-player campaign, um, I waited a while, so I had access to, like, Hawkeye stuff. We had the Akira Railgun and the Chain Gun. Like, we had some pretty powerful crap by the time it was like, alright, time for turrets. And my final draft of turrets was, what, Missile Racks? The B&B, the B &B, B2B, whatever. Missile Racks from Hawkeye, and yeah, that shreds. 
anything. It was really amazing. I was really happy with it. Um, so yeah, a little bit of sales, a little bit of production here, no problem. Now, every single store... What? Invasions, right, I remember. I remember getting crazy aggravated with how many invasions were happening. <laughs> um, anywho, the, the point to note about this game is every single shop has their own inventories for sale. That's kind of important. So I'm kind of messing around this store a lot, and anytime I go there, I won't see new stock until the next day. We'll get a friendly little notification uh, that'll say, Hey, buckaroo, how's it going? It's a new day, new missions, and new stuff is for sale. Um, but since every single shop has their own iteration of stuff in stock... Oh, that was perfect. Was that... That was four right there on the first try, I think. That was beautiful. Uh, what I might be doing very soon here is simply going to another shop just to see what kind of crap they have for sale. And it was it's actually incredibly fortuitous. You'll see, you'll see exactly what happens. Because right now I'm not doing any smelting. Uh, refining. Keep calling it smelting. Too much Minecraft lately, probably. <clears throat> um, refining stuff increases its value by 50%. It costs no energy. It only adds a little bit of time to the process. But if you do the math, every two items I'm selling that are refined, it's like I'm selling three items. That's pretty gosh darn good. That's what that is. So, uh, really important that we get refineries as quickly as possible. I'm unable to fabricate them as I believe they need oleate jelly. And that's in a different biome, and I, I was really keeping to just the grasslands for resources. I was not going anywhere, and right now I need some titanite, like crazy town, because I have the other two resources I need. Uh, also, battery power, super important. And here's a different shop I'm coming up to. Oh, no, this is the same shop. I got turned around. <laughs> I have a little script here I'm trying to follow of all the things I want to talk about. And so I look down at the script for a moment, and then I look back, I'm like, oh, I did go to the different shop. Nope, not yet. So right now I'm just doing a little defragmenting, as I like to call it. I'm cleaning out the silo of all the crap I don't want. And at the same time, I'm building up my tech a little bit. Uh, maximizing time, player time, is incredibly important when trying a speedrun. Oh yeah, this is where I found the god tier level of grassland stones, and hopefully some freaking titanite, you know what I'm saying? Uh, maximizing player control and everything that's within the player's control is one of the most important things. Uh, for example, if I find that my tech is really damaged and I need to anchor, I need to also make sure that I'm fabricating stuff, I'm building stuff, I'm augmenting stuff, like I'm constantly trying to do two or three things at the same time. That's kind of the ideal. So right now there's a couple things happening. All the wood is getting piped out of my system, so defragmenting my stuff. I'm fabricating new stuff, and I'm recharging my shields. That's really cool. That's like three things right there I'm doing at the same time. The more of that you can do, the more of that crap you can keep track of, the better. That's how you really get a good time in a game like this, where you can do multiple things at once. If it's an action, an action platformer, like let's say Blaster Master, okay? There might not be a lot of stuff in that game that you can do like this. Blaster Master is very go to place, kill bad guy, go to next place, kill bad guy, go to next place, kill... It's very... you have to do a lot of movement, and you have to carry your butt to the next location. You can't just warp there. Unless you have the European version of the cartridge. That's a whole different conversation. <laughs> um, but the point I'm trying to get to is here, it's not a ton of movement that has to get accomplished. There's just a lot that has to be done. So I'm really going through my fabrication, my refining, my defragmenting, just getting my stuff in order, cleaned up, ready to move on. That's really the point. So my Geocorp tech is starting to look a lot better. Those last couple pieces I just picked up will make it really seal the deal, I feel. Though I'm not taking the time immediately to do it, I can always add on to my tech whenever there's downtime.
and set up more miners right away. Really getting everything set up is kind of the most important bit. Yeah, so as you can see on the left, those are all of my snapshots, but I'm only using the one that I made this session. That's that's another one of the rules, I, I think. I don't know where I picked up the rules. I don't know if I was like half asleep and I read a forum and I'm like, you know what? I like this game enough. It has a few imperfections, but I like this game enough. I'll give it a swing. Let's see what happens. And so I was like, heck yeah, just gave it a go. Okay, so right now what's going on is I'm rebuilding up my tech. I've got a little bit of time on hand. Not being super formulaic on how it's laid out, I just need functionality. That's all I'm really looking for. Some proper guns in the back. Weaponry is something like, when I played single player, I was really more emphasis about. Because having enough guns is how you defend yourself, support yourself, and everything. Um, but for here, I was so gunned up for getting more cash that the guns became like a secondary. It's just an interesting thing to note, really. Not a bad thing. So now what I was trying to do was set up some sort of a uh, automajig mining thing so that way I could dump off resources and it'll just take care of itself. So not only am I having my harvester or my, my auto miners selling, I also want to keep pushing. Because me just saying like, oh, I guess I'm done playing the rest of the game, that doesn't really do anything. Now, in all reality, I should have used the resource collectors instead of the thimbles. So I also learned a lot through this run. But yeah, at, th at this stage, I think I was heading to another shop, which is right here. So this is that secondary shop I was talking about. And bam, bunch of refineries, bunch of stuff I needed, bunch of just all kinds of good stuff. And this is exactly why it can be really, really fortuitous to hit up multiple shops uh, because different stuff, right? So all of those refineries I just picked up now allow me to, well, <laughs> allow me to greatly increase my cash. Oh yeah, I just did a quick GSO mission because it was the, or uh, Geo mission, Geocorp mission. Gosh. Uh, a lot of the early Geocorp missions are incredibly simple. Harvest resources, sell resources. That's it. Like, incredibly easy. So I can make a ton of cash uh, on the stuff I'm selling because that's the plan anyhow and the other thing is if I get a mission on top of it and some more gear even better so right now what I have is a little bit of a template yep add that to my snapshots a little thing that's going to accumulate resources refine the resources and sell the resources now really quick the way the refinery works, the refinery works twice as fast as the sales guns. So you could have a resource collector or a thimble. You can then have a refinery and then two of the sales guns and nothing will get caught up. That timing is perfect. It'll work out great. So that's probably why you see me laying out two of the sales cannons. Yeah, so realistically, right now it's clean up, get all of everything starting to process. Now we're seeing 233 way more often than the 155. So just a slight time delay gives us a lot more processed erudite than if I did nothing with it. And that means way, way, way more cash. If you see my cash at the bottom, it is going absolutely ape, which is great. This little mining operation, when it's all tapped out, is going to make me a very, very wealthy dude. And don't forget, as I mentioned before, I do have that little side mining, not mining, but that side sales project. And so all the stuff I'm collecting on top of that can be sold, so I can still keep contributing. Yeah, another thing that could be good as a, as a hard mode for this game would probably be to limit how much stuff is sold because uh, you could buy eight refineries eight of the auto miners eight of the sales guns all very early in the game 
Like, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, like, this is a really quick let's play, or speed run. Well, it's kind of a let's play because I'm narrating it anyway. But this works out really, really well. I really enjoyed this. I, I want to give it another go, but I need a little bit of a break from TerraTech. Um, I just finished my first season. It was 32 episodes. And this. And this was, like I said, this was my first run of a total of four or five runs. So right now it's completely up to, up to me if I want to harvest more stuff or if I want to... If I really want to just sit back and relax, and right now I'm still just getting more stuff, making more miners, that kind of a thing. Yep, every single block box, every single, every single bit of cash is going to get us that one million gold just a little faster. And that's what's important, right? So even if the refining and all the work comes from me now, and I do a bunch of work, like I go dump all this stuff off, that's still money in the bank. It's not the best money in the bank, and I could have done better building a little smeltery thing for myself, but, you know, it all depends on how you play. We're sitting here at the two hour mark. We are at a little shy of half a million. So with all the investment and all the time that we took building the refineries and getting stuff all figured out and moving, now things are really starting to kick off, right? So we're making tons of cash. You can see the cash just going ape. Uh, there's nothing in the game that costs this much money. And we could spend more money at this juncture into more infrastructure. We could go to another uh, trade station and buy even more miners, even more refineries, even more stuff. Uh, right now, I'm consciously making the decision of just building more myself right now. Uh, still pushing and still wanting to make more of it. Um, that really being said, I'm not really too sure when the best min-max time is for us to say, you know what, we're done, let's just sit on our butts. But I didn't want to sit on my butts, I wanted to make sure that we maximized all the time that we had with all of the effort we were going to put forth and everything. Just want to make sure that while the miners are doing their thing, I'm also just going to be chucking some idle cash in the bank. And even though it's $6, you know, $6 here and there, doesn't much matter, money's money. Uh, so yeah, I do. I, I guess I do decide to pick up a few more of the refineries and everything. Um, getting the infrastructure all set up can be fairly complicated when you get it all figured out. Um, oh, this is switching really back to the thimble. The thimble setup. And yeah, like I said before, the thimble was a much better choice in terms of what we want to do. The thimble is collecting all the resources, pushing it to the refinery. The refinery is kicking out finished product to the sales cannons, and that, that's really the idea behind all that. Yep, so a little bit of, again, this is using the cab. The cab, I wouldn't call it a cheat or an exploit, but just part of the game mechanic. And here you can really see trying to get it all exactly set up. When you're happy, pull the cab off, pull whatever of the auto miners didn't quite make it, and then you're done. That's all there is to it. Uh, really easy setup, and you're trying to maximize the throughput, how much stuff you're actually getting out of every single vein. That's really the that's really the idea behind that. You can mainly throw just one uh, and make it work, but I really wanted. I guess four was the maximum that you can have, so that's what I really wanted. Uh, three was ideal if I couldn't get four very quickly, and then two was just a uh, you know what the veins are too close together, nuts to it. Um, but I'm pulling pretty average threes and fours and stuff, and that's working out really darn well. Now, for the thimbles, the thimbles won't pull items from a silo automatically. The resource receivers will. So for what I wanted to do for me, what I should have done was set up resource receivers to pull the resources out of my stash and then everything else like that. But yeah, no, this is working out really well. Um, again, really, I'm, I'm, as I'm re-watching this, because I'm recording the audio after the matter of fact, uh, what I really am seeing is a lot of little mistakes that I could have done better. A, a lot of little things that could have been really good improvements. Um, and, and like I said, in addition to the seed and everything else, I really think I could have trimmed out maybe 15, 20 minutes out of this run if I use this exact seed again. I really think that's, I really think that's the idea. Uh, with another random seed, I think knowing what I know now, because I wasn't sure about the resource collectors or the thimbles, I didn't realize there was a, a bit of a disparity 
in between the two, I think that would have been a little bit better if I were to have played that out a bit, a bit more intelligently. But that's okay. This was my first run. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I checked the clock and we're gonna be at two hours, 26 minutes, 35 seconds. And I'm really, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I was really thinking I was gonna be two hours, 40 minutes, something like that. Uh, two hours, 50 minutes was like, if, if I got to that point, I probably was gonna be like, you know what? Forget it. So right what I'm doing here is realizing that these aren't going to work. Uh, the thimbles aren't going to work. They don't they don't drop resources on their own. What I need are item filters. So this is again a bit of another flub up I'm noticing. If I want resources to automatically be dropped off and pulled from the internal storage, resource receivers are the thing. What I'm gonna be working on right now is kind of haphazardously using item filters. Item filters will pull items from, there you go. They'll pull items from thimbles or silos or any other storage. That's kind of the trick. If you want to force an item out of something into something, you need to use the filters. If you're going to use regular refinement fabrication processes, you don't need item filters. You just need con or item conveyor or filter conveyors. Oh my gosh, I've been playing too much Factorio lately too. Um, all you really have to do is use the regular conveyor system and it works just fine. But since I want to forcefully pull an item out of something, that's why I need the filters. The filters will do that forceful maneuvering of stuff. And it's the same technique we used before. I was selling all the lumber right out the gate, right out of my silo to make sure that the wood wasn't eating up all my storage space. That was the rationale behind that. So just making sure that everything is moving nicely and yeah, so you can see the, the problem is to, in order to get the resources moved over, I've got to willingly drop the thimble for everything to be just thrown on the ground and then the thimbles pick it back up, which is kind of annoying. And yeah, here's where I'm like, you know what? Why didn't I use resource receivers? That was dumb. And I had a ton of them. So now, now I become the harvesting mogul that I wanted to be. Now, everything that I'm picking up is getting pushed right back into the system. We're on 870,000 monies right now. So yeah, I got a full load. I'm gonna just squeeze a, little, a bit more resources. And I'll just be able to back the, yeah, all the thimbles. All the thimbles will work just fine. Don't need silos, don't need anything fancy. Uh, silos, space for space, will hold more than thimbles, but that's okay. Uh, trying to be a little nitpicky, get all this lumber out of here. And come back to the cell station wherever the heck I put it there it is and just back it up and that can just refine and sell all day all night that's just extra money in the bank uh, speaking of money we're coming around that 930,000 mark real soon here yep so now I'm just trying to push the limit as much as I can just try to get some work done uh, destroying other techs does provide a little bit of money but not a lot of money Unless you're dealing with a lot of really large techs, um, that can get you some cash. But the other problem is if I'm dealing with much larger techs, uh, that adds a lot of risk. Yeah, here I'm just going bananas on thimbles. Collect all the resources, bring it back home. Anything that'll get me over the limit, extra good. Uh, this is, we're starting to wrap up here. Um, the only real tips I have just as a recap is know all the items. Again, the thimble versus the resource collector would have been really great if I knew that before. Uh, the second thing is maximize all the time you can. Ensure that if you're selling stuff or buying stuff or rebuilding stuff, stay anchored. Get a little more battery power and all that. Uh, third thing is just knowing how you want to set up your rig and bam, there's the million mark. Two hours, 26 minutes, 35 seconds. I'm really happy with this run. Um, realistically, I'd love to give it another honest try. With the map and all the seeds and all the human errors, I think I could trim out 15, 20 minutes out of this. But yeah, had a really good time with it. That's really all I have to say about it. If you'd like to give this a try, it's the 1 million block buck challenge. Uh, let me know how it goes. Let me know if you've got any different uh, recommendations. If there's anything that you saw I could have done differently to have sped up my time, I'd love to give this another go. So yeah. 
I guess that's really it. There's my victory pose right there. <laughs> my name is John Megacycle. Uh, another episode of Terra Tech is in the books. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to catch you next time. Hey there, guys, gals, fans, and pals. Thanks for checking out my video. I also want to take a moment to thank all my supporters and donators, and if you'd like to join up with me and Game With My Crew, all the information to get connected is in the description below. Thanks again, and I hope to catch you next time.